This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys and seed. Cake Wallet is trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible by contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Andrei Savolnikov, a.k.a. Crypto Zoidberg, founder of the Xano Project and apparent primary dev on the very earliest CryptoNote code. They discuss his journey into the cryptocurrency space, his role in working with Nicholas Van Saberhagen on the first implementation of CryptoNote in the form of Bitcoin, and his relationship with the Monero project. Perhaps most positive in terms of Monero was Andre discussing his admiration of the Monero researchers and the size of the Monero community. Despite his mixed feelings about how he was treated by the Monero devs in the early days, he now has respect for the progress the project has made. While we can't verify the veracity of everything Andre said, it all seemed very genuine and we have been told by some Monero OGs that Crypto Zoidberg was involved in the earliest days of CryptoNote. We hope to continue conversation with him, and who knows, maybe he will work on Monero one day too. Monero Talk starts now. All right, man. Thanks for coming on, Andre. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure. So uh, what do you prefer, Crypto Zoidberg, Andre? What's the, uh, what should I be calling you? Today? Yeah, it's up to you. Uh, everybody calls me Andre. What, it, what is Crypto Zoidberg? Uh, is that, does it mean anything? No, absolutely nothing. Just a funny like funny alias okay so uh yeah i saw you somebody tweeting about you uh you know on twitter um then i saw the seth estrada show you were interviewed there oh, and yeah. i i was like oh who is this guy this uh, this is interesting and uh apparently you were involved in the early days of crypto note yeah and i guess you were involved in the bitcoin project that came out of that so I'll, yeah, I'll, just let, I'll just let you go for, yeah, yeah, let you kind of give a quick intro on that. What, uh, what was your, or maybe even before we got there, how did you get into crypto? What's kind of your, your With short the story? Yeah. Um, some of my friends uh, say that they have an interesting fintech uh, startup, startup. So they <clears throat> connected me with the founder and they explained it me like briefly what is crypto currency. It was like a long time ago uh end of 2012 i guess and um i thought it's some like what the fuck is that <laughs> i didn't know anything about uh crypto before but i was curious um, and uh, i like it uh the team mathematicians so i i i, I agreed to to start the working on this and uh, so yeah, your, then your, I, fir your first dive into crypto was really working on crypto note yeah, yeah, I didn't know. I, di I didn't have any experience with this. And uh, when I started to work on this uh, team, uh, they uh, learned me everything. Uh, the guy who you know by the name of uh, Nicholas, he taught me like everything, a lot of stuff. And uh, yeah, this was crazy exciting work. <laughs> when I started to work, uh, at, after a few months, I figured out that it's probably the best project in my life that's most challenging and the uh, most interesting because it's full of uh, uh rocket science like i never i never saw anything like this in my life so i was really excited yeah when, and uh, when you say uh, so for anybody listening so nicholas i'm, I'm assuming you're referring well, to Nicholas Hansen, or, or Hagen, i don't know right? yeah, yeah 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 i don't know how the, to write pronounce it so the the anonymous uh creator of crypto the mathematician guy yeah so and then he, he had reached out to a, a so there were a group of people that were working no, on he, I, I, he was just in the team uh there was there's a founder uh of the company founder of the project and uh there is a team was uh not uh there was a actually a mathematician and uh, a few other guys i would call it this way so yeah they um they say they have idea they have uh, some math and they want to build uh, the project based on this. And what were they looking for you to do? What what role did you play in that? Well, I had um, uh, experience with the distributed uh, decentralized networking. 
and uh, I was just uh, recovering after my case with Microsoft. I was trying different works uh, and uh, um, was trying to find out what I, what I want to do in my career and my life the next. Uh, and uh, yeah, so my experience was like, looks like a perfect fit for them because I had a really strong background in C++ and architecture and in networking. Uh, I've been working with the networks and um, the security products, uh, uh, firewalls, like uh, eight years. So I had a pretty pretty good background. So they said, OK, come, join us. So I was like in a position, I was uh, creating the architecture of the, the software architecture uh, and uh, implementing the, the first was implemented peer-to-peer -peer protocol. Uh, and then uh, I implemented the core and then I implemented the wallet. And then I was uh, launching test networks in the office a few times. It's failed many times. And then it's, yeah, then it's finally it's worked. And so that I, was, I was the that coding implement... guy. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was the, the, the guy who was most of the coding job. OK. And that implementation was Bitcoin. So CryptoNote is, you know, the, the white paper that described the basic technology. And then so Bitcoin was the actual the first implementation. Yeah. Yeah. That, OK. Um, I guess before we go on. So what else can you tell us about uh, Nicholas Van Saberhagen? I know everybody that's listening in, they're all Monero. Uh, you know, a lot of them are, are hardcore Monero enthusiasts. You know, that's kind of a a mystical name for a lot of us. It's like the Satoshi well, of Monero. So what, what yeah, can you I, reveal there? Actually, the first I want to uh, make a note that it's not me who hiding him from anyone. It's uh, he doesn't want to be public person. He doesn't want this. I asked him many times, why would, why won't you go public and take the credits that you deserve it? But for some reason, he, he don't care much. Uh, he don't care much about this. And, uh, yeah, for my for for my like my opinion, he is the the brightest man I ever met, um, the brightest mind, and he is the actual the bright the the beautiful mind behind the project. He is Nicholas. Uh, I was uh, just uh, like a coding guy. I was just making implementation on my place. Could be like anyone else. Yeah. So he is he is uh, supposed to get all the credits for creating this. Is, is, he, is he still around, still communicating with you? Is he still working on, on projects? Uh, I don't know what you mean, around around what? Around <laughs> crypto field? Is he, is he still lurking around and, and, and active in these communities and building things? And uh, I don't think he is around crypto community, but I don't want to speak on behalf, on behalf of his uh, him. Um, uh, we talking to him pretty much. I ask him uh, his advice uh, often. Uh, sometimes he helped me, but he's not a part of uh, Zana team. He's not a part. He never been part of the Bulberry team. He's just a yeah, just a smart friend of mine that I can ask sometimes for suggestions or for some ideas for critics. That's it. Yeah, I, I hate to push you on it, but it's just so interesting, you know. Like it's just something that uh, we love hearing about because um, you you know you never really hear much about him. Does he ever talk about? Did he ever talk about like Bitcoin and his thoughts on Bitcoin versus crypto note? Did he did he ever have like discussions about those and or reasons as to why he develops crypto note? Um. I really, I really don't want. I, I, we were talking about this uh, many times, and he had a much more experience than me. He he was uh, involved in this way earlier, and uh, I just don't think I can represent his thoughts. Uh, it would, wouldn't be right. I I can, I can probably ask him if he want to answer to oh, any of your questions, and but I I, I really doubt agrees to do this but i can we can try that would be nice amazing yeah, can, that would be wow that, that would be amazing to talk to talk to yeah, him you can write uh, this question later to me and i'll i'll ask him but um, okay i don't know i i i respect his privacy and uh, of course yeah, and, uh, you know for me I'm, I'm balancing my my respect for his privacy with just my excitement of wanting to know more you know and uh he he was obviously one of these people that seemed to at an early time understand 
uh, that Bitcoin was lacking something, which is which is privacy on a, on a protocol level. Do you have an opinion there? I mean, you've, you've obviously been in a crypto space for a very long time. Um, what's well, your opinion there? Um, well, we uh, the, the the idea was to write from the scratch uh, the new core. At, the, at the, that time, it was a pretty new idea. I don't know if there was uh, any projects like solid projects written from the scratch. And we were like we were studying a lot of uh, literature. We were like reading notes of Gregory Maxwell when he was writing. What would I do if I launching like launching Bitcoin today? What would I do different? We were reading this stuff, stuff and stuff like that, and was trying to make improvements where it's uh, where it's possible. And we had like a lot of arguing, uh, a lot of uh, we was bounce trying to bounce different ideas. How would they work? What they won't work? And uh, of it's gonna fail or it's dangerous to do this way. So it was, yeah, it was a lot of things. But it was like it was the best part, I guess. It was very challenging and very interesting. Yeah. What do you think, uh, you know, philosophically in terms of like a coin like Bitcoin that's, you know, ultimately transparent at its core level and something, you know, these crypto note coins in particular, Monero, uh, and the fact that at its core, it's, you know, uh, private and every transaction is obfuscated. What do you... What do you think about that in terms of these two different types of tools? Do you think there's a, a space for both of those? Do you think one ultimately will overcome the other as being a more efficient means for, for transferring value on the internet? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I want to say that um, at the beginning uh, of the product, I wasn't a visionary person. Uh, it was not my ideas to implement. I was hired. I was said, this is your job. And I was not even familiar with open source um, community. What is it? How does it work? I didn't even know that it's working this way, that people contribute. Uh, I was just, OK, this is what we're doing. OK, I'm doing this. And I don't feel I have a right uh, to like to project these thoughts or these ideas. Um, I only know that. Um, it's been idea that the perfect money uh, should be private. That was like the big missing part that the, there should be privacy. Uh, and we were building, the idea was not we were building just a, just a privacy coin, the idea that we were be building uh, like a perfect money. This mm -hmm. was the idea. This is what I can tell, but the rest things, uh, again, I just don't want to pretend that I was the visionary who was seeing the privacy as a priority blah 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 i became a believer uh way later when i started to work in the space when i learned it, uh how things works in space when i started to use a crypto for myself for for my for my life and there 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 i became a believer and uh, there i became a uh like a convinced person but at that mm -hmm. moment it's uh it was the founder who has the visionary and uh the nicholas Guy. Okay, but 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 you you were you were quite early. You were there for the early days. So whether or not you're the visionary, you, you know you've you've gained certainly gained a lot of wisdom. And uh, I agree with everything you're saying in the, that it's you know it's about creating uh, perfect money, not not necessarily just adding privacy to money, but the fact that money, digital money, should be private by yeah. its very nature. Uh, but sorry, I didn't get the question. What what is the question? Well, I'll, I'll move on to the question. I was, just, I was just commenting. But the question, I guess my next question would be, could you tell us more about the history? Uh, it's, a, it's a little murky, right? So we had the crypto note white paper. Uh, you were part of that. Then uh, Bitcoin was the, the first implementation. Uh, then my understanding is that BitMonero came from Bitcoin. Uh, then you have the, the, the Booberry, Bullberry. What is it? Bullberry? Yeah. Bullberry Project. Yeah. So if you could kind of explain that tree and you know what, yeah, what, yeah, what sure. came from I'll, what and, and when. Yeah, I'm happy to explain, but I have to uh, say that um, I would say that um, I know there is a there is a white spot in the history for you guys, and you are really willing to know this. And uh, 
Uh, the, the problem is that I cannot tell you everything, not because I just don't want to share you. Uh, I have some, um, I had a really good connection with the founders and with the team, and I had some obligation. I decided that, I, uh, that I'm leaving. Well, it's not actually I decided that I'm leaving, they fired me, but uh, I will tell you the story. But uh, I had agreement that I'm not revealing some parts of the history that is sensitive for them. Uh, no matter if I think it's right or wrong, just agree with this because he was my employer. Uh, and uh, yeah, we just made this agreement. And um, uh, the history is, uh, sounds like this. Uh, at some point, I say that uh, I have a really deep disagreements with the way project launched. Uh, I don't believe uh, in its success in the way it launched. I don't believe uh, it's right. And uh, um, uh, due to maybe some other things I was said, uh, it was quite emotional. And they said that I'm not going to stay in the project, which is reasonable. I would do the same on their place. Uh, and I knew this, that they're going to say that they're going to fire me. And uh, we agreed that I work uh, one month. I find someone instead of, instead of me, the lead developer, instead of me. I was playing the role of the lead developer at the moment. I was decided to quit. I was like fired. And um, uh, we agreed that I taken the months. Uh, I educate the new person with everything I know and uh, leave the project as is. And uh, we'll start my project then after I quit. So this is what happened. Uh, I was working one month in the project. Was looking, was looking. I found someone instead of me, the new guy. I educated everything. And uh, I saw Manera was rising on my eyes. <laughs> uh, that was really interesting. <laughs> I didn't, I, like, nobody expected that it's going to happen so fast. So I quit and I started my project with uh, zero knowledge of marketing, zero understanding how things working. Like, like I was making a lot of my decisions this time. And uh, I was just focused on technology because this is the only thing I could do. <laughs> and uh, I missed a lot of opportunities uh, for the project. Um, there was zero marketing. There was zero work with the community. And still, there was some people who was willing to contribute. There was people who was helping. It were, even there was um, the guy from Monero. Uh, there was name Osa. Uh, do you know this guy? No. Osa. Osa. He was on the website for a quite long time, like between the. How do you spell? Uh, How do you spell? Osa, the German guy, Osa. Oh, okay. Uh, he probably yeah. still on Monero website. Did you yeah. interact with like some of the other core devs, like Fluffy Pony and no, Binary no, I just Monero no, Moon. I, I was just uh, saw his comments about me uh, in different threads. Uh, just other people showing this to me. Uh, I was surprised to see it very critical, and I was like, why? <laughs> why would you do this? <laughs> uh, I, I I didn't expect this, and. Uh, at the same time, they were uh, taking my commits, blindly copying this because it was first days they didn't know code base, so they copying every commit that I do or most of the commits. And uh, yeah, I even once made a joke about the because they took the commit that has no connection to Monero. It was the commit about my code base that's not related to Monero. They copied this to Monero, and I made a joke about this. And Ricardo, like he. He was pissed off. He wrote some uh, long uh, message to me and think that that was the, the reason why he <laughs> don't like me. <laughs> yeah, it's, this is all all fascinated stuff. Fascinating, and it's 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 an interesting history and yeah, but it was appropriate for Monero. I what? think we were like a kind of childish at these times, and um, I just want to make note: it's not that I really hate Ricardo because of this or, or because the other stuff was said, uh, our critics or accusation that I'm a criminal. But also, um, I have some mixed feelings because he did an absolutely great job for promoting technologies that we created. And uh, <laughs> this is yeah what he was doing. And the other guys was pretty good. Yeah, so it's kind of mixed feelings. What, why? Um... Yeah, and I'm sure that exists throughout the whole space, and that's understandable. 
Uh, I mean, you know, you guys are so intelligent. You guys put your your blood, sweat, and tears into these projects. Granted, they're open source, but they're still, you know, your creations. And I understand why that tension would be there. Um, but wh why didn't you work on the Monero project? Why you said you saw it kind of gaining, taking off, and gaining momentum? Why not contribute to Monero? Or maybe maybe you did. Well, um, my idea was uh, because I had uh, some thoughts how I want to uh, build the project from techno te technical perspective. And my idea was from the beginning that I will make uh, my own fork. And uh, uh, the idea was to bring few uh, technology improvements there. And uh, at that moment, first, at that moment, Monero wasn't that big. Like mm. uh, they became really big, really fast. But at that moment, they was just a uh, fast, like growing com community. And uh, second, uh, uh, well, they was pretty aggressive from the first day I, I stepped into open source community. The first day I stepped into Bitcoin talk, uh, Monero uh, community, Monero core maintainers uh, was pretty aggressive to me. I didn't expect this and I couldn't understand this because I was, why well, you guys, you're building your names on top of my work, on top of our work, and you're they at, at that time they already knew that I'm from the original team. They knew it because uh, I was talking to Osa, and he was like he probably told to everyone. And they even did the investigation, but they found out that I'm from the original team. And this uh, Bender's nightmare, this little tip that I left, I left it like with intention i i really wanted to be like uh, found out that it's me I, I really wanted to leave the trace uh and but they like presented as something very negative and a very very aggressive so i i didn't have any like will to contribute to this project because of mm -hmm. the attitude gotcha well yeah. lessons should be learned there and i i think that i hopefully they have but i think my understanding is some of that that uh, anger and energy was because they were concerned that the Bitcoin project was very scammy and that it had that large pre-mine. Um, that's my understanding where that kind of that vitriol came from was the concern. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think you're right, probably. Uh, and uh, there was a different things. Probably they've been um, at the first at the beginning when they were not close to code base, not familiar. There was probably uh, intimidated by someone who can uh, make like uh, biggest improvement uh, and uh, take the lead from the community. Probably this or uh, probably they, I, but they knew that I'm not a part of the Bitcoin anymore because I separated myself mm. uh, and uh, I, my work was always transparent. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, what? probably I should, what I should do at this time is to, uh, went like to to become public person to open myself and uh, to uh, like represent my project with an open face. But the problem was that uh, at that time in Russia, uh, I was living in Russia at this time, and um, at that time, cryptocurrency like the attitude to cryptocurrency was pretty um, undefined, and there was a statement that the cryptocurrency developers may go to prison so nobody was working like openly and i mm -hmm. i also didn't want to be uh, open for this for this reason yeah but that was a mistake i should have uh, make come out <laughs> Yeah, well, not necessarily. I mean, a lot, a lot of the you know Monero, some of its largest developers are are anonymous, and I think there's you know there's a lot of good reason to stay anonymous. You know, even if you're ultimately doing a very positive things for humanity, uh, you know, there there are other powerful entities that may want to stop you, and you know, there's nothing wrong with staying. Yeah, if anonymous. it's a, if it's a developer, it's true. But if you're a founder of the project like that, um, mm -hmm. it's tricky. It became tricky because. For many reasons, first of all, for privacy projects, uh, the emission is not transparent, and uh, people and some exchanges they are afraid that the money is getting from the air, and nobody can control it, nobody can see it, and uh, and also if you have a pre mine or a death fund or something you control, you should be a public person. Probably your developers may be uh, a private, private, anonymous person, but you, as a 
a founder who present this project, you should be known and a public person as a point of trust. In terms of the founder. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least there, there should be some face. Yeah, um, that's why we uh, we doing uh, Zana. As we started Zana, we started it with uh, uh, everybody by real with real faces, and uh, there is no. We we do it mm, like more openly, just to yeah. like earn more trust. I mean, a lot of people say you know that the power of Bitcoin is that there you know there was no face, there was Satoshi. But I, I get what you're saying. At least there were there were early people that be became public faces that talked about it. Uh, and like Ricardo was that for Monero. He since, you know, tried to, uh, I think, distance himself so that he's not being seen as being, you know, a founder or uh, a leader of a project that's ultimately decentralized, but totally understand the points you're making. Why, why, um, why did Bitcoin, I mean, this is probably a question you don't have the answer to, but you know, why, why did they start with this pre-mine when it was, could have been such a promising project? I mean, this guy was obviously <laughs> yeah, a genius, uh, <clears throat> Nicholas Van Saberhagen. Uh, why, why not just start it in a natural, decentralized, open source manner and the way Bitcoin Here's, a, here's the real questions, right? <laughs> so um, the first of all, I, I want to stress it, and it's really important for me that um, like um, the people who was working in, uh, it's in, in open source space and the crypto space, traditionally it's different, but in a, in the corporate culture, the technical team doing this job, and there is a founders or business development or business decisions. And uh, I just want to say that a technical team behind the uh, Bitcoin was not responsible for business decisions. Mm. This, is, this is my, this is why here, this is why I come here and I want to defend the technical team mm -hmm. uh, that no one from the technical team was responsible for these decisions and no one from the technical team was ever supported this. I just want to make it clear. And uh, yeah, unfortunately I cannot ask, uh, answer you why they did this, uh, unfortunately for you. But yeah, at that moment we were just, um, yeah, like in any company, we was just uh, developers like geeks who was doing their job. And we, okay, yeah, we thought it's gonna be launched one way, it's launched a different way. Okay, we don't like it, not, but nobody cares what we think. We are just a geeks. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, hopefully, yeah, is, hopefully we can get, get you guys working on Monero too. I know, I know you're you're making great strides with your with your with your project. Uh, let, let's talk about that. So it started. <laughs> Actually, as, they never offered me. Uh, well, I'm not complaining. I'm not seeking for opportunity, but they never offered me. Uh, any positions or any like um, asking for a help. <laughs> so I, okay. I think this is part of the attitude. They did never want me to be part of the Manera clan, uh, part of the Manera uh, camp because um, I'm not blaming, but I think the, the strategy was to make me look uh, kind of a toxic person. Uh, that's part of uh, Bitcoin, part of the scam project. So no one will ever talk to me or take me seriously and stuff like that. So I think they never considered, uh, never considering me to, to take me on board with the Monero. Hmm. Well, I, I have no, I'm not a rep, you know, it's an open source project, but, uh, you know, it seems like the, the, the more brain power we have working on it, the better. So maybe, yeah, maybe I agree we'll, with this. Uh, maybe and, we'll... uh, I have a lot of respect to like a lot of researchers uh that uh contribute to monero and uh, i even often jealous to uh like the the way you have the the, the you have a, like huge community of researchers and uh, a lot of eyes look into every single line you do you have a lot of reviewers this is what i wish to have in my project and i really uh i really would like to know how to achieve this so this is yeah well, this is I'm, guys, I'm sure if you propose some some additions to 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 add, uh, you know, make changes to the Monero project or ideas you had, things you wanted to research, I'm sure even the community would potentially, you know, fund you for it if you can show that you have, you know, the the chops to do it. And it seems like you do. I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a tech guy, um, so I, I don't want to misspeak or anything. But um, 
you know, it seems like if you had that enthusiasm and you brought ideas to the Monero community, I'm sure with open arms. Uh, yeah, but they- what would say my investors and uh, my holders? They supporting my work, supporting our team. Mm. And uh, if I would start, we are like now, especially now we're trying to uh, deliver a new privacy update and uh, compete directly with Monero. Uh, not now. Now we are we have a like old privacy model, but we really want to uh, compete in this way. And uh, if I start to contribute to Monero, I would like I would have a questions from my investors for sure. Mm-hmm. This is very competitive uh, environment. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. When you say you your investors, you mean just the the, the coin holders of of uh, of Xana? Well, we have a, not only holders. We have a, a something like foundation. It's not public. We don't have it on the website, but we have a few uh, big holders, and they are pretty. Some of them are quite big names in the space. Just uh, they do it privately, and they mm-hmm. support our work. Uh, they help us. They help a lot. So yeah. And um, I know, um, I know a lot of holders. Like personally, we were meeting in the different parts of the world: in Singapore, in Berlin, in Zurich, in Mexico, in Mexico. And uh, yeah, I know. Like personally, I know a lot of our holders. So I will. I don't. <laughs> they would have a lot of questions to me if I start to contribute to other project. Uh, they would be jealous. I'm pretty sure. Well, maybe they hold Monero too. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Yeah, they do, they do, but uh, yeah, this is kind of like tribal wars or something. They, uh, they, some of our holders, are, they take it like very personally, and they think sometimes they think if they support us, that they're supposed to hate Monero for for some reason. Uh, they, some some people take it like very personally. And, it's uh. You know, it's it's a very uh, tribal environment right now, and it makes sense. You know, it makes sense. It's it's because of, you know, that's part of the the genius of the invention of Bitcoin, right? Is is this greed that's built into it, where you know, uh, as your project succeeds, it goes up in value, right? And uh, it's it has good results and bad results. One of the bad results is you have this very this very tribal atmosphere going on, but ultimately, you know, I think competition is good and. We're, we're seeing good results come out of it. Yeah. You want to tell us more about, uh, so you had Bullberry and then it, why, why did it turn into Xano? What's, what's the history there? Well, um, yeah, I can, I can tell you, but uh, I came here not to shill my projects uh, here. Uh, oh, okay, I was giving you the opportunity to talk about it, but yeah, happy well, to. Yeah, we just, uh, we just wanted to recreate the model uh, we want every every Bulbary holders to have an option to benefit from new technology, but at the same time we figured out that we have to rethink uh, the way we fund the project. And launching Bulbary without Premine was a suicide for me. It was a big mistake. Uh, uh, I was like I was not experienced at that time. And in 2014, uh, launching the project with Premine considered by some people as a scam. Even if it's transparent, open, it's, some people always come and say it's a scam, uh, and I was kind of confu- confused by this. But so Wolbury is just a right way of uh, of launch, relaunching the project, and uh, now it's it was absolutely right decision. Now we have foundation, and we now the last month we even didn't even take the money from the from the dev fund because we were able to get. Uh, Staking and get uh, donations from our foundation. So, yeah, the the dev fund is a really important part. It's like something like a like a gravity core for the project. It's important to keep it untouched uh, and big, like for a time. I, I'm not sure if it makes sense for you guys. Yeah, no. It does. So, what what is the structure of it though? So there was a. I'm sorry because I, I couldn't. I'm sorry if I heard it. Yeah, there we, was a we, just, we created new block. Uh, we created new blockchain with the premine and structured it for some parts. Uh, some part goes to to the team, and the the biggest part uh, is a fund. Uh, the fund, the money that we use only for development, mm-hmm. and uh, supposed to 
be used for some listings or marketing promotion, but we never did it. We only was spending it on development on the team. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much this. And uh, if you guys want, come jump on our Discord or our website, take a look on this, ask a questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, how many how many co coins are in existence? Is it capped? Does it have a tail emission like Monero? Uh, yeah, it has a tail. Since the launch, we decided to mm -hmm. make a tail emission, uh, and we we are proof of stake and proof of work hybrid. And uh, I think Monero would need to do this at some point. I really believe that pure proof of work is a uh, way to nowhere. Uh, from technical perspective, uh, no offense. I, I mean, this is. I was thinking about this like a lot. I was talking with the different people. Uh, I think every crypto project should move to or hybrid proof of work, proof of stake, or pure proof of stake. Uh, and um, due due to this model, when we have a proof of work and proof of stake, we are in the more safe zone from a perspective of 50, fifty one percent attack. So we made this only one coin per the block. Uh, we could uh, we could lower uh, uh, emission to one coin per block, and I believe it's quite safe, hopefully. But this uh, due to proof of stake part because it's it's pretty hard to perform uh, fifty one percent attack with the proof of stake part. Mm -hmm. The biggest holders uh, will never agree to participate in anything like this. Do you have any opinion on uh, on Random X? Have you been keeping up with that? And and what? what? Ah, Random X. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I was following this. Uh, uh, this that's uh, two idea, like the same idea. Uh, we use Brook Uh It's uh, nearly the same, but Ethereum use. So the idea is uh, oh, right now the modern idea of proof of work hash function is to make a perfect fit fit for some uh, massive uh, device that is like has a, like a lot of devices like that uh, in everyone. So one choice is to make a fit to CPU, and the second choice is to make a fit to video card, and uh, random mix is. Uh, targeting to fit into CPU and to make it a perfect fit and to make it uh, not profitable to build uh, some uh, ASICs device. And uh, uh, Procpov or Ethereum algorithm, they fit uh, trying to fit to video cards. It's uh, same approach, but different targeting different uh, devices. Both, uh, both approaches, uh, I think for me, it's the same, but different targeting. and. Uh, yeah, random X is, uh, I, I think it's pretty pretty good. I, I don't know much details, I just know the idea uh, and they, the, the targeting to CPU. And CPU is a very, um, very modern CPUs are, they are quite tricky and uh, you should have like, uh, and with probably I saw you have a really uh, good uh, background on this. And yeah, I think it's pretty good. You think oh, overall it's it's a good strategy to, to kind of move it's, towards that one CPU, one vote, idealistic uh, proof of work scheme? I think it's the only strategy. Uh, well, not one CPU, one vote. I don't think it, you can uh, say it from this perspective. It's just some amount of money invested in into hardware and it could be a uh, few cheap CPUs or uh, less but expensive CPU, or you can uh, rent some hardware on the cloud. Uh, it's still like have different feed, but it's yeah, it's very close to close to average device uh, in the market. Uh, I don't think it's about voting CPU per what. It's about voting by money. You invest some amount of the money into mining and you vote by this money. And the same, absolutely the same story with video cards. You are investing in a bunch of, you're building the farm, you're investing in, doesn't matter how many video cards you have, it's just matter how much hash rate you have, you vote with hash rate. And you literally, now you don't even supposed to uh, buy this hardware, you buy the hash rate on the market. 
So, you know, I, I'm obviously, you know, a, a Monero fan, you know, so, you know, I, I have my, uh, my biases there, but I, I think it's, it's a currently the best form of digital cash that we have today, especially compared to something like Bitcoin. What's your overall opinion there? Which <laughs> do I agree that Monero is the best, the, the best. Which, yeah. Which one do you think is doing the best at achieving digital cash status? So it's, it's great for censorship resistant value transfer. Yeah. Um, it's really hard because there's different perspective when you uh, from, from which you look at the project and, uh, uh, see the value in the project. For example, Bitcoin, um, uh, for now, for me, Bitcoin is something that goes to, um, to fit some regulations. And it's not going to be probably not going to be the way it's supposed to be. It's going to be censorship there or some other stuff. But maybe due to this, it will gain even more value. It will gain more liquidity because of institutional investors and stuff like that. So from that perspective, Bitcoin is a like super, super cool thing. Uh, on the other side, uh, Monero is a strong project uh, with a strong, probably strongest community, a real, really community-driven project, and uh, and uh, privacy-focused. And this is also a big value. I think uh, I'm not like uh, analyzing analyzing from technology perspective, Bram, but from the the volume and the value and the um, like how big your your community you're one of the strongest projects in the privacy field i i don't know it's the the strongest but probably one of the strongest maybe the strongest and uh yeah but i don't i don't know how to say which one is the best there is a, a lot of value in a, in a stable coins a lot of value in ethereum ethereum is a great project and i really like uh they have a really strong uh researcher there I was reading the proof of stake, uh, different approaches, and this is really smart. And um, yeah, there is there is different directions, and I I just don't think it's right to pick up the one project and say it's the best. Yeah, but if we talk from the privacy perspective, yeah, I think Monero one of the the best. Now I agree with you. You know, in that you know, Bitcoin seems to become the is becoming or already has become the you know the, the welcomed coin so welcomed by 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 governments and and banks almost they're almost uh wanting people to to move on to it um but these more uh you know disruptive projects like monero and zano these things that are truly you know um censorship resistant and private do you think they can be stopped? Do you think governments will try to stop them? Do you think ultimately they can't be stopped and you know they're going to eventually prevail? Well, well, <laughs> um, maybe by some countries, but uh, in general, maybe in some countries, uh, privacy coins would be banned, uh, but in general i believe it's really hard to ban technology itself uh in the modern world and this is a good thing uh and um i think uh, they, they probably would do this with bitcoin but they never able to ban it like totally so they decided to regulate it and to adopt this i think uh, no i think uh, privacy coins will find their ways to to mass market like even more mass and now, now it's like for uh, for for the guys who like privacy who are uh, focused on this but maybe i think it will find its way and it's not going to be banned globally i don't think so where where are you uh where are you living these days you don't have to give me exact location i'm just curious you said you're you're no longer in in russia or no i'm 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 traveling a lot and uh last uh year and a half we've been living in montenegro in europe so nice. small country and adriatic sea very beautiful country by the way uh mountains uh but right now i'm in serbia i came here for a few days just because i have something to do here okay yeah i've, I've driven through there once i drove from poland down through uh I, we yeah. were going to greece and went through montenegro yeah beautiful it's, beautiful place yeah it's a great trip 
uh, great road. So what what uh what are you most excited about right now in in crypto and the and what you're working on? What's what's exciting you the most right now? Uh, what's your passion? Well, um, I can say that right now I'm excited. I um, well, first of all, from uh, as I'm excited as an engineer. I've uh, been working on this and. Uh, uh, like you always learn a lot of things, a lot of really, really, really like very complicated stuff. And uh, you have, for me, like as a person who is working, he, uh, working this industry, I'm meeting like some smart people that I have a lot of to, a lot of to learn from them. And this is, this is really cool. Uh, from as a, as a professional, as a, as a developer, uh, this is, yeah, the, I don't know if I would be able to work on anything else after crypto because to my, like to me, there is nothing else keep you that much stressed, that much uh, focused uh, because everything you do is, um, every every little mistake can be uh, fatal. So you work, you, you do a lot of work on uh, on the background, you you make a lot of tests. Uh, you, you probably don't know, but, uh, in uh, in Monero, in original Bitcoin code base, was a, a specific subsystem of core tests and unit tests. And I saw that Monero team is using them. They create adding new tests because they know why why it's done. Uh, and every time you make any change in the core, uh, the tests they run the launch test and they say if if you broke something. And this is really important part for for us. We yeah we are making a lot of tests. Everything we do. And then we do like like five, ten, or like six tests just to cover everything. Um, and my advice to Monero developers to put more tests because <laughs> they, uh, to my uh, opinion, they don't use it much. Yeah, and um, uh, there was just a, a lot of um, I don't know how to say it. a lot of things uh, that put. In the code base, uh, which uh, which created uh, as a huge basement uh, for the future future improvement. It's my opinion because probably it's because my code base, but I know that it's created a lot of a lot of um, space in the future. Uh, even talking from perspective of the network protocol, it's flexible. It's easy to add and and extend it, and uh, from the architecture uh from a lot of space and that's that's why i got really uh frustrated when i hear that someone probably ricardo is writing that the bitcoin was just an exercise of the criminals uh like some like it's not fair it's like a lot of talent uh a lot of efforts put in this uh code base so it's just not fair it's not it's not a random thing that was just randomly occasionally happened it was right team uh right people in the right moment together to my knowledge mm. there was a uh, two teams before me they was trying to build this project that failed it they was the team was cancelled at least two probably three but i know about two teams it was uh, before they was before me we see that in Monero, somebody anonymous put up a proposal to to essentially kind of clean up the Monero code and and uh, you know make it, I guess, make it more efficient in ways. Uh, there was you know some theories that maybe it was somebody from another project. Do you have any insights into that? Have you seen that that proposal? No, no, I don't, okay. I don't know anything about this. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I think my code is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's not. I, mean, I don't think so. But uh, there is a, a lot of uh, parts are made really good. I'm really proud of uh, the network protocol works. And uh, yeah, I'm really proud of uh, some things. There is, a, there is a space for improvement. And uh, we're working in, uh, on this. And I saw uh, in, a, in Monero community, Monero developers doing an uh, absolutely great job. They keep using the code base. They, they keep using the code style, yeah, which is absolutely great. Some of the and I, and I know when they started, one of the things was the fact that the, the I'm not a developer, but I know uh, 
the comments were missing uh, from from the code, which made it very difficult to work. Yeah, with. you can blame me for that. <laughs> yeah, it's my uh, my bad because yeah, that because I never I was never working with open source before. I didn't know what it is, and I I didn't expect that the future of the project will be the way it was. Yeah, so we we was we were trying to launch pro project. Uh, as soon as possible, we was really working. During the time I was working nearly every weekend, even though the, the office. So uh, the idea was like, okay, we will put comments later. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, it's uh, yeah, shame on me. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we um, that 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 is funny. So you know, anybody who's watching, you know, I. You know, we're t we're taking you for your word right here, right now. But I I think it's great, and you know, people can go and do their own research. And I appreciate so much that you're coming on and, and just talking about this. You know, and yeah, uh, my pleasure. It's I actually appreciate that you gave me an opportunity to speak uh, and uh, yeah, just clean some air and uh, explain yeah. explain and maybe defend. We're, we're gonna, the we're gonna get you working on Monero. That 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 that's my goal. And I, uh, no, I don't think so. I I, I really uh, stick to our group, to our investors, and I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, we would be happy to collaborate as a team to team. Probably that would uh, that would be absolutely amazing. And uh, we are having uh, a paper about new signature, a new ring signature. And uh, you, uh, like every researcher from Monero Group, are welcome to come to criticize this, to find the problems, or take something for you for your project if you want. Yeah, yeah we are very open to work. It. Are you familiar with? Yeah, are you familiar with Triptych? That's the one that's kind of being proposed on, on our end. Yeah, yeah, and we are aiming to uh, compete with Triptych. It's a log size signature. Is it so similar concept? Uh, uh, I, I, it's not me who creating the the paper and the uh, signature itself. I I, uh, I know that it's very different, absolutely different. It's based mm. on different idea, and we have uh, the guy who working uh, in the research for us, uh, Anton Sokolov. He is working on this paper. Uh, it's it's available. It's public. I can share the links later, okay. uh, and you can take a look. And uh, we would appreciate peer reviewers. We even can. Or pay for this, or give some bounty for if you found some problems. Yeah, we are we are happy to get your researchers. <laughs> um, one of the big criticisms of of Monero and so I guess crypto note coins in, in general is you know their ability to scale. Do you have do you have any opinion there? You know, often it, you know Bitcoiners will will criticize and say you know they're they're not as scalable. Uh, they they mean that they have a lighting protocol and Monero don't have, or this you mean from this perspective? Well, no, just even on on the protocol level, and you know I I, I disagree, but I I just wanted to hear your opinion there. Yeah, just the way it's the the yeah, architecture I, of the, the, that, you mean from perspective of transaction validation time? Yeah, and the transactions are so large because yeah, it's the the price of privacy. Um, yeah, I, I I I agree that this is uh, the scale. Uh, Bitcoin itself didn't uh, solve the problem of scalability itself. They a little bit better because they don't have to create this uh, complicated and heavy signatures. But they didn't solve the scalability problem also. And I believe that um, uh, as an industry, we are only at the beginning of the history of the technology. As it it will be evolve a lot in the future, and the scalability is the uh, one of the biggest challenge, and uh, I think uh, we would need to put a lot of efforts and work. I think it's a real problem. Yeah, I agree with this, and uh, um, not only like for Monero, for uh, for most of the coins, and uh, uh, we we need to find solution. That's one of the challenges. And like la layer two solutions. What do you call layer two solutions? You know, like uh, L like Lightning Network, like but for for. It could, be, it could be sharding or a lighting or some side chains. It's good. Like there is different approach. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't see that we have some solution right now or even have direction that will lead to the solution. But uh, yeah, there is a lot of work. Just I see it's 
it's actually a great opportunity uh, for that. And um, uh, we were, yeah, we were working a lot on uh, creating a synchronous core. I don't know if you in Monero did this, but uh, originally in Cryptonode uh, core, when it handled transaction, when it processed new transaction, adding, uh, it like it blocked it, it cannot handle other transaction which comes through the networks relate, relate. and uh, this was I was running uh, like a lot of stress tests. I was like simulating uh, with the cloud of peers and making uh, uh, making like simulating uh, transaction big transaction flow and see when the ne network gets broken at what level it gets broken uh, and uh, there, you can see a lot of interesting uh, events uh, like situations happens how networks getting broken how it's getting how it start to die and why and uh, net uh, the core itself uh, is a kind of bottleneck so we uh, made uh, made it really asynchronous even if the core is validating right now this moment a transaction even in the process of adding new transaction to the core the same moment it can handle all the network transactions so the network is not blocked and uh, that was the power part of our work on scalability because we saw it's the problem but uh it's just a, it's not a big step i think it's just a um, nice feature to have but uh speaking globally yeah it's it's a big challenge and it's room for uh, for improvement if someone will find a great solution someone will move forward the whole industry with this how about dynamic block sizes? So Min Monero relies on that. Do you have any opinion there on dynamic block sizes? Yeah, yeah, we we did, we put it for for a reason. <laughs> yeah. So what yeah, what's your opinion on that in terms of uh, scalability and in? Yeah, the, the actually scalability is not held uh, by size of the block because the problem was the at the time we were uh, creating this there was a lot of uh, arguing about. If we should increase in Bitcoin, if it should be a block size increased or not. So we decided to create some uh, mechanism which will adapt dynamically adapt the block size. Uh, it may create some potential uh, attacks. So probably uh, at some point we would need to make this uh, rule of uh, of dynamically adopt uh, the block size more. Let's, to make it harder to move it, to move the median of the size of the longer period or some other uh, approach. But basically, idea of dynamic block size is, uh, I think it's cool, it's great. But uh, the problem is not the block size. The problem is the performance of the core. The problem is that because we have a bunch of transactions, you need a time to process every transaction, uh, validate every input, uh, validate every signature, proofs, and all that, that stuff. So block size even is not a kind of problem. Problem is the uh, uh, core performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's for me. Understood. And then the tail emission, we spoke about it a little bit. Um, do you see that as you know being necessary just because of the architecture and the dynamic block size? Or do you see it also serving a purpose of ensuring that the network is always mined in the future, not relying on purely transactions, but relying on uh, a continuous block reward. Sorry, I didn't get this. Uh, the, the the tail emission that's part of the design. Tail emission? Tail emission, uh, okay, so, and the question is? The question is, I guess just what your thoughts on tail emission and, and the purpose that it serves and whether or not ultimately it's, you know, it's a good thing. It's a good part of the design. Ah, yeah, I uh, I agree that tail emission uh, works a little bit better uh, because um, uh, the value of the the value of the of the transactions uh, of the money that you're transferring are growing the same with the price of the coin. So uh, when the when you have a very expensive coin, the blocks price are getting higher and the attacks getting higher. So there is no, there is there is no reason uh, to uh, to make it smaller with the time. 
yeah uh, for me it doesn't make any sense but you have to find the right uh, trade-off between the size of the the reward because big big block reward will create the pressure on the price create uh, inflation and uh, some people think that it's good i don't i don't think it's right uh and uh zana was a uh, uh, the project that inherited uh, emission from Bulbri. So we already have a lot of coins on the market. Uh, so we didn't need this fast emission at the beginning. So mm -hmm. we decided to fix this emission and we had some calculation about the potential cost of the 51% uh, attack. And for, for, uh, for our uh, consensus, we need 51% of the coins and 51% of the proof of work or like the fractions, but uh, with the uh, low that doesn't make this attack easier. So we decided that, okay, one per one coin per block will be like fine for, for, for any price, no matter what the price is bigger or smaller. So yeah, yeah, this, this, and this like give us some safety at the end of the emission. We know that there won't be situation when, uh, when the, there is, no block rewards like or very small and that's lead to potential attack so we would need to hard fork to change the emission i think this is the right decision but yeah it's the industry is changing pretty fast and uh, every 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 year you you're getting new attack vectors new conditions so probably that's need to be changed at some point do you think that's a problem with Bitcoin's architecture? The fact that it is capped and they don't have the, the tail emission? Uh, it's hard to say. It's, uh, right now, it's hard to say what, how it would be in, in a few years when the block reward will get, will, will drop. But it may become a problem. Yeah, it may become a problem uh, at some point. Yeah, I don't know how crazy Bitcoin price will get. I uh, mm. have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, Bitcoin is trans transforming into something probably at the time when uh, in a few years Bitcoin will will be transformed into something that is not even um, not even sensitive to fifty one percent attacks. It's probably it will consist only from institutional servers, and it's not going to be even like truly decentralized. Mm -hmm. Right, which. I think is a I think that's a problem. That do you, you would you agree that's a, a problem with uh, censorship resistance? Uh, um, I think that's just the way Bitcoin may uh, became. Uh, I, I just have uh, difficulties to uh, express my thoughts in English. Sorry, sorry for that. It's okay. But, you're, uh, do, you're doing great. Uh, thank you. Um, I think that. Um, I don't think it's a big problem because industry don't not consist from Bitcoin anymore. Uh, the industry is a big uh, industry has its own different different platforms now and different focus. And uh, Bitcoin now uh, probably will take just one direction, and this direction will be moving to some uh, more regulated uh, more regulated uh, direction. Yeah, uh, probably. I, I don't think it's a uh, it's a bad because we have a lot of other projects and the market will give the value to every like if the if the privacy is missing for the market if people really need the privacy then the privacy coin will be more expensive more valuable and uh, more used and this is perfectly fine it's okay so mm -hmm. uh yeah but i think that's the that's the direction that bitcoins goes and uh, I don't think it's good or or bad thing. I just this is what this is what it is. Mm -hmm. What do you think of these uh, you know attempts to try to to crack crypto note to try to track and trace it? Uh, you have Cipher Trace that was I don't know if you're familiar with them. They were yeah yeah I heard about this and I was watching the interview with uh, Sarang Netter and the yeah. guy from Cipher Trace. Uh, great job, by the way. Um, I think this is very healthy thing, and uh, this is just uh, uh, just just uh, the just 
confirm that you're just one of the best privacy project. They try to hack you, but I didn't see how they do. And I, I don't know if they, if they didn't broke the signature, uh, they probably make some, um, some uh, analytics based on the timestamps or mm-hmm. analyzing. The, yeah. 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 But it's, uh, it's a risk. Ticket. It's probabilistic. Yeah. Um, I don't know, without knowing technical details, what they do, there, is, there was no proof that they broke privacy of Monero. I, I never seen anything. Now, these companies and these uh, governments that are attempting to do these things, do, do they, uh, you probably can't answer yeah, this yeah. question, but do, do they ever reach out to somebody like you looking for your con- consulting? The government? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I've never been reached. And uh, probably if I would, I wouldn't be able to speak about this <laughs> without <the> NDA. <laughs> it was a silly question. Yeah, but I, I believe this is very healthy thing. And gr- this is great that you're having this uh like opponents they're trying to break you but by by trying to break you they point to some weak weakness points if you have one and you can fix them and uh, the same as like uh uh trying to analyze and uh, to link the ip address and the uh, and the transaction is also challenging uh task for monero uh, especially even you have uh, this dandelion uh plus plus protocol yes but still if attacker have a, has a lot of IP addresses, he can make uh, uh, he can he can get a percentage of the transaction. He, he can figure out, and you can also analyze the appearance of IP addresses in the protoc- uh, in the peer to peer network. And uh, if someone just show up just to send transaction, you will notice this, and you can like find out the IP address. So uh, there is a lot of space for improvements here, I believe. Um, yeah, there's there is a healthy thing. There, there will be always something, someone who will be trying to break you, and you should be always one step ahead. Yeah, it's you know it's how the the immune system works, right? It yeah. needs to be attacked yeah. so it could build up uh, immunity. Another major criticism that you know Bitcoiners in particular always mount against crypto note coins and uh, Monero in particular is auditability, right? So they say that. You know, because of Monero's obfuscated transactions, and you can't as easily audit uh, and 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 know whether or not there's been a secret inflation of some sort, and that that's a, a critical flaw. What's your What's your opinion there? You mean that uh, someone can create the coins from the air and nobody notices this? Yeah, that's ba- basically yes. Yeah, that's the problem of like. Every privacy coin, I believe. Yeah, yeah. This this is a big concern of exchanges, and uh, probably, probably uh, exchanges will some exchanges will delist uh, privacy coins because of that or because of regulations policy. I don't know, but this is yeah, this is the problem. Uh, and like, what is my attitude? I I I, I admit that the problem exists. Uh, this is true. Do you think it, it gets overcome with time as, as it gets audited more and more and, and the code is audited, the implementation is audited? That I think that will be some solution at some point which will prove uh, or some system of proofs that uh, amount of the coins are consistent in the whole system. I think it will be a solution found for that at some point. Hmm. Okay. All right, I, this was great. I think we, we covered a lot of ground. I appreciate you coming on. Maybe come back on again in the future. Yeah, yeah, anytime. All right, anything else you want to chat about? Anything you want to bring up? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for, for letting me to, to speak, to explain myself, uh, to tell a little bit of story, probably not all everything you wanted to here but this is what i can speak what i what, what i can tell and um uh yeah i this is pretty much it uh hello to monero community you guys, <laughs> you guys doing a great job uh even sometimes you could be aggressive to other projects but probably this is the way how in the current environment big projects can exist so yeah 
this is uh, I, I absolutely uh, I'm absolutely excited that uh, technology that we created for me for me uh, Monero will always stay a fork of our technology and uh, it won't ever change it for me but I really uh, proud that you guys did such a great job for promoting technology for improving this technology that uh, you found uh, like really strong uh, researchers to improve this and to look into this. This is amazing job, and I wish I could do the same with my project. Andre, thank you, man. Thank you for being so genuine coming on here. Yeah, my pleasure. Any any recommendations of other people that maybe I should be looking to talk to in the space that would be interesting to hear from regarding, you know. Uh, the evolution of crypto note things like that i don't think anyone uh from from crypto note uh is a uh, public or willing to speak uh to public but if they if they will decide it uh, i would be happy to present them yeah if they ever come to me and ask that they want to talk yeah but um i don't know i don't know on, on the crypto note dot org which i don't even think it exists anymore it had those the people that were listed on there they were all uh, i don't know any of the fake people. names yeah so what what was that can, can you uh, elucidate that a little bit what uh sorry i i don't know what to say to you i just uh i was not part of anything that's on the cryptonode.org site okay and uh, i i cannot give you but i think Probably you guys uh, know everything you need to know about this. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Andre. Nothing new I can tell to you about this. Thank you so much, man. Where can people uh, learn more about you, continue to follow you and the work you're doing? If you want to tell the audience, where, where's a good spot or good resources? Uh, um, I have a Twitter, which I don't use <laughs> too much. Um, we have a blog uh, on Medium for Zana Project. Um, yeah, you can just check uh, our Discord. We have a great community managers. They will give all the guidance. They give the links and yeah, I, I I'm not very, I, yeah, I'm not Twitter guy and I don't have my own blogs related to technical my technical life. So yeah, just uh, Zana website and uh, our blog. We post everything we do from technical perspective or what we do like from organizational. We explain there what we're doing, what is the technology behind this and what we're working on. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you very much. It was a really nice talk. All right. Have a good one. Thanks for yeah. coming on. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much and we look forward to being back next week.